All right, I am Justin Tomlin. I'm from Statesville, North Carolina. And today's date is November 8th, 2010, not November 7th like it says on your computer screen right now. I issued an original video yesterday, but I was kind of in a rush to get done and it wasn't exactly the quality that I wanted it to be. So I decided to take the time tonight and make an actual video. Um, this um, is my 2010-2011 winter outlook. I focus mainly on the Piedmont and surrounding communities of North Carolina, um, but in some parts I do speak on a national level and uh, in a regional level. Um, definitely for the southeast I speak um, in, the mid in some parts of the mid-Atlantic region. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and move on and show you what an average winter looks like in Statesville, North Carolina. I'm not going to insult your intelligence by reading this whole graph to you. You can do it. If you want to pause it, that's fine. Um, you got your average highs, lows, precepts, no record highs and lows. Um, and I've got arrows highlighted, yellow arrows, um, and they indicate what I think will happen this winter. Um, December, I think, will be colder than average hence the pointing down arrow. Um, January and February, I do think they will be above average in the temperature zone. Um, I reserve the right to change this forecast at any time, but I promise not to change anything drastically on you. Um, I'm confident in this forecast um, and how this winter will play out. Um, let's see. Uh, let's move on to the Old Farmer's Na Almanac. Um, you see the red line going through about half of the country. Um, above that line, it'll be cold and snowy, and the things highlighted in yellow highlighter are the things that I don't exactly agree with that the Almanac predicts. I do not agree with cold and snowy in the southeast, cool and wet along the Gulf Coast, uh, wet in, the southern, in Southern California, and mild and dry throughout the region in, north of the line. I think it'll be somewhat um, cold and snowy. I think they'll have below average temperatures and above average snow um, or wintry precip above that line. And I'll speak for the area south of that line, which includes North Carolina, here in just a moment. Um, I'm not going to say too much about the southeast right now because then that'll give away the rest of the outlook. This is the North Atlantic Oscillation. It's one of the things I look at when making uh, outlooks. And I just wanted to show you in comparison, or this year in comparison to last year, around the same time, and show you where we're at. Um, we're at about, right now, we're currently about negative one and a half degrees below normal. Um, and last winter when we, it was about all the way down to negative two. So we're roughly around the same area, maybe a little bit uh, warmer than last year, but not too much. And here is the sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific regions. Um, the thing highlighted, or the numbers highlighted in orange towards the bottom of your screen are the current data, and the negative 1.3 is actually the August, September, and October um, sea temperatures. Um, this is the sea surface temperatures, remember. And so to make my outlook, I went and the key years that I looked at were 98, 99, 99, 00, um, the winters of 88 and 89, 73, 74, and 75, 76. Yeah. And then the winters of 64, 65, and 54, 55, and 55, 56. Those are the however many winters I looked at. Um, and really looked at what their winter was and how it played out and was kind of surprised to find out in the 90s um, how how active it was because I was kind of bummed making this forecast thinking well we're not going to get too much this winter but I'll discuss that a little later on but this is one of the things I look at I also looked at the solar cycle and a bunch of other stuff to make this forecast but I just didn't have time and didn't make the effort to put that on the video. And here's what an El Nino, oh, and I didn't even indicate, I'm sorry. The negatives on this chart are um, indicating a La Nina. And uh, the red positive values are indicating an El Nino. And I'll explain what those are here in just a second. 
here we go. El Nino is where the you know the sea surface temperatures are above normal um, in the equatorial Pacific, like I just explained. And this is basically what it causes on the U.S. Um, we've got a, su a southerly suppressed jet stream, the subtropical um, branch of the jet stream, and that's what we had last year, and that's what gave us so much snow is the southerly track which allowed bunches of cold air to get down into North Carolina and very active storm track and that allowed so many systems to come through and just throw bunches of snow back and when it hit it hit I mean 10 inches in each storm almost um, definitely in parts of the region and you can see how cool and wet the southern half is and how warm the northern half is well it's kind of the opposite in a way on La Nina La Nina, it's definitely colder than average on the northern half and warmer than average on the southern half. Um, you can see the different jet streams and uh, storm tracks there. Um, that, And you can read off the map and figure out what it says different places. Um, I think, my predictions, I think this is a general map of the storm tracks and the and the area shaded in blue will be colder than average and the shaded area shaded in yellow will be slightly warmer than average and at any point at any given time it can be extremely warm or extremely cold in any of these areas it's just an overall average this is my prediction this is a very general prediction it's not pinpointing any one location states will I'll pinpoint you here in a second um, but lows will travel along this general path and the cold air will stay trapped to the north. Um, but this causes something that you don't exactly want to see um, for North Carolina. And I'll show that here in just a second. Uh, temperatures this winter, states for North Carolina, we will sit right at the edge of being just below average. Um, not too many people are putting out this outlook that I have. I mean, I've looked at tons of different ones and I've only came across one or two that kind of agrees with my thinking. Um, so. I'm kind of nervous about putting this out here because um, NOAA is not thinking this. I do know that much. Um, but this is what I think, and this is what my data and my gut is telling me. So temperatures of winter, I think, will be about average. Um, it just depends on how cold December is and how warm January and February is. Uh, but, yeah, so in it, the regions north of us they'll definitely be colder than average and like I showed you on the map earlier uh, area southeast of us would be warmer than average and precipitation this winter due to a northwest flow and I hate not being on PowerPoint because I drew this in on my other video if you'd like to go take a look at that I'll probably put a link up under the comments um, but because of a northwest flow event um, that's pretty much constant that sends fronts down through the mountains I think they could end up with above average snow this winter actually um, maybe not I mean maybe not drastically higher amounts like they had last winter I mean they had I mean the snowiest winter they the third snowiest winter they'd ever recorded um, but I don't think anything like that will happen but precipitation to the northwest of us will definitely be above average and this precipitation southeast of us will be below average we'll there again, stuck in the middle, average temperatures, um, or not average temperatures, I'm sorry, average precipitation. So area southeast drier, areas northwest wetter. Um, here's the thing that I was talking about you don't necessarily want to see, um, or that you don't want to see uh, in winter. I'd rather see snow than this, me personally. Um, I like ice, but causes a lot of damage, a lot more damage than snow, and it's not exactly pretty. Um, and you can't really get out in it. Um, but the high, okay, what happens is a high pressure system sets up over the northeast. It pumps down cold air on the east side of the Appalachians. The cold air, it's very shallow cold air. Um, it gets caught in between the mountains and the coast, and that's where we are, Statesville, in the Piedmont. And then you got a low pressure system coming up from the south. Well, this throws back moisture, and it in the warm like warm air from the Gulf and the su southern regions overrides that cold air because cold air is more dense. Um, 
And so the warm air overrides it and it falls, the precip actually falls as rain, but it falls into that shallow layer. And if the shallow layer is deep enough, it can cause sleet, which is ice pellets that bounce around, or it can cause freezing rain, which is rain that is rain and it just freezes on stuff. Oh, I'm sorry. It freezes on stuff as you go through, um, as the, as the rain falls, it'll hit something that the surface is below freezing, say a mailbox, and it'll form ice on that. And that's what downs power lines. So my overall outlook is for below normal snowfall. Um, I'm kind of hesitating with saying that because if I think we could see below normal snowfall, I would look towards the three to four inch amounts because I think the bigger concern will be ice this year because we're long overdue. The last ice storm we've had was in 2005. But I think below, definitely below normal, I'm not sure, below normal snowfall, but it could be normal and it might even be above normal. It depends on how many snow systems we get in here and how deep the cold air actually is. And if we can get that uh, precip to fall as snow instead of freezing rain or sleet. So, I think if we see a snowstorm in, in December, then I think that the overall snow for the whole winter will be maybe just slightly above average, and our average is around 6 inches, so maybe even up to 8 inches. But if we don't see a December snowfall, it could be 3 to 4 inches um, would be the area to focus on then. So a December snowstorm, look for 8 inches. No December snowstorm, look for about 3 to 4 inches, because December, I think, will be the most wintry month here in Statesville, North Carolina. I think that we will have two to three ice events because of the setup I showed you just a minute ago. Um, because we don't have enough cold air to make snow. Um, we just have just enough cold air to make ice. So I think we'll have two to three ice events, maybe even four. Um, maybe five. It just depends on how much moisture we get in here and if we can get the time in the lineup right um, with the high pressure in the northeast. I think that I can almost guarantee, I don't like saying guarantee this early in the game, but power outages maybe not directly for your house or the area surrounding uh, Iredell County, um, but somewhere in the Piedmont of North Carolina I think we will see an ice storm that happens that knocks out power. Um, we're long overdue for it, like I said, 2005 was our last one, um, but I really think we'll have at least one that knocks out power, so go ahead, it's better safe than sorry, so maybe get a power outage kit prepared, and then I think temperatures, again, slightly above normal, maybe slightly below, it may be normal, just depends on how cold December is, and if after December I'll have a better gist of where we'll be at, um, December is definitely a key month this winter. Um, normally it's just an introductory month and it's not got that much say-so in the winter overall. But it has it's a definite player in this um, winter. So there's my overall forecast pretty much. Thank you for tuning in. Um, I'll keep you updated. If you don't know me, Facebook me. Um, J Justin Tomlin. Again, states from North Carolina. Um, say you saw my winter outlook, or pro I probably want to prove you as a friend. But definitely do that if you would like, and I'll keep Facebook loaded with information about any winter event in North Carolina outside of the mountains. I don't keep up with the mountains too much. Um, but, yeah, that's about it. So thank you again for watching, and have a good day or night or whenever you're watching this, and God bless you.